We are Adam and Catherine, also known as Adventures of A Plus K. And welcome to our van. We are so excited to finally give you the grand tour of our Sprinter van named Brisket, but real quick, we wanted to share a few stats about our van. First of all, it's a 170 wheelbase 2019 Mercedes Sprinter. It's mostly the same as previous years, but a few slight differences here and there, mainly like the back windows. We used 40 hours of freedom, also just known as Sarah and Alex James Van Bill Guide to plan our layout and to help us with our build. So if you follow them, you may notice that our van looks very, very similar to theirs. We honestly just thought their layout was perfect for our needs and there's tons of ways to build a van, but it was just perfect for what we were trying to achieve and working on the road and everything. So we followed that. We also used Dynamo Ultima's Van Build Guide to help us out a bit. So most of the time while building the van, we flew back and forth from Seattle, which is where we lived, to here in Austin, Texas, which is where Catherine's parents live. Uh, we used Catherine's dad's help a lot to build the van. Without him, it would have been tough to <laughs> Thanks, do. Thanks, Dad! So yeah, he had the space, the tools, the know-how to help us out. Um, so in total, it took us about seven months to build it, and that's flying back and forth, working on it on the weekends when we're here. Uh, we traveled a little bit. It had some hiccups along the way. Things just... <laughs> take longer than you think so and working full-time so yeah. it wasn't like a full 100% focus on the van for seven months there yeah. was a lot of back and forth so in total it was probably like three and a half months yeah I all mean in all. we hope to be on the road about a month ago but again with it's so hot here 100 <laughs> degrees every day We're sweating. <laughs> yeah and um, it just made it kind of a struggle at times but seven months to the day we are done it? yeah oh, wow, cool. <laughs> thank goodness <laughs> And the grand total of our van conversion, and this only includes like materials, supplies, tools, any labor that we hired out, it does not include the actual van, was $23,374, which sounds like a lot, but to put it into, into perspective, that's about how much we spent on rent for an entire year in Seattle. And we plan to be on the road for longer than a year. So we think, you know, it. It makes sense a little bit. It's not too, too bad. Yeah. You can build a van for less. So we just want to make that clear. Like this is definitely like a more luxurious van, I guess you could say. We wanted the comforts of a home. We wanted to have some higher quality products and items. So not everyone's van will be this expensive, but that's how much ours was. <laughs> it's kind of scary to say it out loud to all of the world, but we actually have a very detailed blog post that we will link below, which we're, where we break down all the costs. We link to products we use, talk about all the mistakes we made along the way, or most of the mistakes. So check that out if you wanna see kind of what areas of the van cost us more. Uh, we also filmed basically our entire van build. Yeah. So if you wanna see kind of the progress to get from when we bought it to now, check that out too. And lastly, something we're adding in the description is something that I thought would have been helpful along this journey and some of the other videos that we watched is we're doing a timestamp for each of the areas of the van. So if you're just here for one part or you need to rewatch something, something like that, look below, you can click and go right to it. Awesome. Well, I think we got all that out of the way now. So let's get started and show you the van. So the first thing that you see when you enter our van is our closet. So while we followed a van build guide we tried to think really hard about like what specific items we wanted to bring in the van and where we would put them so we tried to maximize the space as best as we could to make every inch of this place provide some sort of value so the closet's a really good example of this so when you open it up we have the top part right here which stores all of our backpacking gear a few items for kona our bug curtain it's kind of a a little bit of a mess. There's a lot of things in there right now. Maybe we'll organize it better later. Behind this door here is our some of our plumbing. So we put this there just so you can't see it right when you open the door. And the lower part of the closet is where we tried to really maximize the space the best we could. So right here we have a slot to put our dog Kona's crate. So whenever we're not using it, we can tuck it in here and it can stay safe. Right here we have a slot that fits our away suitcase. So I have a full-time job and I travel a good amount for work. So I needed to make sure we had a suitcase in the van at all times. The nice thing about this is I can store stuff in it while it's in here. So it has like kind of a double purpose. 
And then below, you don't see anything here besides a drawer right now, but this is where we plan to store our laundry just so we can keep like our bathroom clean, like the hallway clean. We're trying to reduce clutter as much as we can. It's a very small space, so we wanna make sure everything kind of has a place. That way we can try to keep this place a little bit neater. We'll see. Another thing we did to give ourselves more storage is we built this headliner shelf. So in a normal Sprinter van, the ceiling goes up, like the roof goes up all the way right here We're in the driver area, but we built a shelf because we didn't really need all of that space and it's a great way to store more stuff. So we have a headliner shelf. And one thing we did that we haven't seen a ton of people do, but we really wanted was a door on here because we want to be able to kind of throw stuff in there and, and not have to look super neat and kind of make our van look a little bit cleaner. So when you open this door, you will see some window covers. And then the main reason we built this was to store some of Adam's golf clubs and also our backpacking gear. So we love to backpack and it's kind of hard to store like those massive backpacks in a small van. So this is kind of the backpacking backpack home and then the closet stores more of the stuff that goes in the backpacks. And lastly, one thing in this area that's worth mentioning is we have like a Velcro strip right here and then we have a blackout curtain that basically just attaches right into it. And we wanted to have the blackout curtain even though we have window covers for the front just to make sure we have lots of privacy at night and if we have to stealth camp at all to make sure no one can tell that we're in here we also have a bug curtain that goes on the front sliding door area as well as the back doors and we use velcro to attach those as well we just got those off amazon super cheap they make really nice custom ones but we are over budget so we went the cheap route <laughs> So one of the comforts of home that we have is an S-Bar D2 heater. We installed this underneath the passenger seat. That's a pretty common location for vans. Um, with that, we have a high altitude kit. So when we're in Colorado or a mountainous area, I think it's above 5,000 feet, you need this altitude kit so that it can work properly. So we have that. Another thing we added to the van is the Max Air Fan. This is the pricier of the van fans that people get, um, but it has 10 speeds. It has a rain cover. It can blow out, it can blow in. In hindsight, we wish we could have placed this uh, in the back more above us when we're sleeping. Um, but if you think about it now, it's going to help with cooking, getting the air out from there and also from the bathroom. We also installed five windows in the van. This is kind of the most intricate one. This is the T vent window. So this is going to help with uh, ventilation along with the fan. So you turn this here and it opens the window there. In the back on the sides, we have two regular windows and the back doors are just regular windows as well. In hindsight, again, we wish we would have added another T vent or some kind of opening mechanism on the window, but those were about twice the price. And again, we're over budget, so. Welcome to the world's smallest bathroom. We really wanted a shower in the van. As you can see, it's pretty small, so it's gonna be perfect for just rinsing off after a hike, things like that. Uh, we also plan on having a gym membership for when we wanna get the full cleanse. The other necessary item we needed in the van is a toilet. So this is a nature's head composting toilet. The cool thing about this is your number one goes in this front tank here, and your number two goes in the bottom tank here. After you do your business, you turn this knob here and it kicks around the composting material that's in there and every three weeks you need to change that out. We hear great things about this and it keeps the smells down. As you can see, the toilet is a pretty large piece here, so it didn't really sit inside the shower pan very well. So we had this wood slat platform built for it and it attaches right here. So when we need to change it out, we just unscrew that, pop it out and pop it back in. So probably my favorite part of the van is our kitchen. We love to cook and make a lot of home cooked meals. Despite what all of our travel vlogs show, we don't eat out all the time. We actually cook most of our meals in. So having a kitchen that had enough space to prep food, cook food, as well as store food was really important to us. So the first thing we have right here is our sink and our faucet. We have a farmhouse style sink as well as this like really beautiful black faucet. And what I love about this is that the doors right here and it opens so we can you know do dishes while looking out that might be like the most fun way to do dishes i don't know we also have a butcher block countertop which we tried to keep the weight down on this van as much as possible but we really liked butcher block so we tried to sacrifice in some areas so we could have this we also basically like put a bunch of holes underneath the butcher block to take some of the weight out. We have this in another one of our van build vlogs, but hopefully that kind of lightened the weight of the butcher block a little bit. 
And then we have this gray subway tile right here. So this actually is not tile, it's like a sticker. So it's adhesive. You basically put a bunch of pieces up and kind of work them all together. And if you quickly glance at it, it looks real. If you look closer, it looks a little fake, but that's okay. We also have some fake succulents here to just give it a nice little homey feel. I wanted to note that these do not stay on the van while we're driving, so don't worry. We're not gonna have like fake succulents flying everywhere. It's just for some nice decor right now. So we have a handful of different cabinet spaces, drawers in the kitchen area. The first one being these two doors underneath the sink. So when you open these up, we have our cleaning supplies on the right side. And then on the left side, we have a pull out trash can and recycling bin, which we're really excited about because we were able to fit such a big trash can in here. And when we're on the road and if we're in the middle of the woods, we don't know when we'll find a trash can. So being able to have enough space to put any trash that we have was really important to us. And it's also important that we can still recycle on the road. So we're really pumped about this. I This is one of my most favorite things in the van. Adam was like cringing when I told him how much it costs, but it's just really neat and handy and it fits so well in this cabinet. And then in this cabinet is where we're kind of storing all of our cooking supplies. So in this first drawer right here, we have some spices. We have like a little zoodle maker, our measuring cups. And then in this drawer, we have like our bowls, uh, some like Ziplocs, some cutting boards. In this space right here, we have our plates. We have like our uh, pour over for our coffee, some Tupperware. And then at the bottom is where we're storing our two induction stove tops. So as you may have noticed, we did not put like stove tops in the counter space. And that's just because we wanted to have as much counter space as possible. So sometimes we may need to use both stove tops if we're cooking boiling water and also cooking veggies. Other times we might just use one. So we wanted to have the flexibility to be able to put the stove tops on the counter whenever we need them. Because some days we may not even need stove tops. So uh, they do take a lot of power, so we're gonna have to be really conscious of that. But the nice thing about the induction stove tops is we hear they heat up really fast and they work super well. And then above our refrigerator, we have our silverware drawer, which has obviously our silverware as well as some, some knives. Uh, some spoons, some spatulas, all that fun stuff. One thing we haven't mentioned yet is that we're using these latches to keep all of our doors from opening. So we have these latches that we'll link below and they're working really great so far. Every time we've driven the van where nothing's flying open, keeps everything nice and safe. We also have like a, like a shelf liner in these drawers so things don't slide around as much. And probably the most important part of our kitchen is our refrigerator. So we have an isotherm refrigerator and it's 4.6 cubic feet. And it's probably one of the largest fridges we could buy for this van. And that was important to us because like we said, we like to cook a lot and we don't want to have to run to the grocery store every day, especially if we're kind of camping out somewhere more remote. So when you open it up, we have some spots for waters, lots of spots. So we have a lot of storage in here. We have a little freezer. We actually chose a fridge with the smallest freezer we could find because we don't tend to freeze much stuff, but we love it. We think it's going to store a lot of good stuff for us. So this is our nice dresser. It has three giant drawers. So this top drawer is mostly my clothes here. Second drawer is Catherine's drawer. Hers looks a little more organized than mine. <laughs> and then this one's kind of a hodgepodge drawer. We have our vacuum, some of our shoes. These are our uh, shower towels and just some hodgepodge things. We also added butcher block to the top of the dresser just because it looks nice. And it's also another kitchen prep space here. So right here we have another beautiful fake succulent. <laughs> Add a little homey flare. This is uh, our Simply Safe. This is the alarm system for the van. It comes with a lot, bunch of other pieces, so a uh, camera. So when we leave Kona in here, uh, at times running into the grocery store or something like that. Uh, it has a freeze sensor, uh, which also includes a temperature sensor. So if it's too hot or too cold, uh, there's a motion sensor, also a glass breaking sensor, and then comes with the keypad to control it all. It was really important for us to have some kind of security system in the van so when we're out hiking in the grocery store, coffee shop, things like that, we can keep an eye on the van and know that it's safe. Above our dresser, we have an upper cabinet here. Opens up, we got the latches on there. Got some uh, toiletries. This is a random spot for it, but that's a uh, backpacking lantern, toilet paper. Another random spot for our coffee uh, grinder. And here's some of the Simply Safe stuff. And then this is also our Wii Boost, which is a uh, cell phone signal booster. So hopefully when we're out, in the mountains, we can still get some signal if we need to work, be on the internet, things like that. 
One other thing to mention about the Wii Boost is that we have two different hotspot options to connect to. So we have a AT&T unlimited data plan on our phones and it's not technically unlimited. They do throttle it, but we do have a, an unlimited amount of data. It just may be slow at times. We also got a Verizon Jetpack because we hear Verizon's the best in more remote areas. So we have two different providers that we can connect to in the van for internet. So hopefully wherever we are, we'll at least have one of them. Also our Simply Safe has to always be connected to Wi-Fi. So it has basically cellular service in it, and I believe it's T-Mobile, but then we will also always have it connected to our Verizon hotspot, which will just stay in the van. So we needed that to make sure we can always run our cameras and check in on stuff when we're away. We do hear it will suck the data out of this really fast, so we'll probably be camping out of places with Wi-Fi or going to coffee shops to make sure we always have internet service. And then above the kitchen, we have another upper cabinet. Uh, this is our control panel for all of our electronics. So as you can see, we have um, these switches here. This is the cold water pump, hot water, our tank monitor, which is this thing right here. And then this lets out our gray water from under the van. This is the battery monitor, tells you how much uh, voltage, percent of the batteries. This is the uh, thermostat for the heater. And then moving on to the right, you have, these are way too many coffee filters um, and then some other kitchen things these are all the manuals for the uh, electronical electrical things and then this is the uh, solar charge controller that takes the solar energy from the panels on the roof and charges the batteries and now for our office dining room and bedroom all in one so we chose the layout of not having a permanent bed for a couple of reasons so one we don't have bikes or anything, so we didn't need that garage space that most people put underneath their higher up bed. We also just liked how open it felt to have windows and like the headspace to kind of walk around the van. It just made it feel a little bit more spacious and bigger to us. Also, we both have full-time jobs, so I have a 100% remote full-time corporate job that I can work from anywhere, so I'm gonna work from the van. And then Adam has his own web design business, so we were both working at least 40 hours a week and to save money at coffee shops we thought it would make more sense to have a workspace in the van so we can work here all day long if we want to and we have this large pretty large table to work That's from a huge table. yeah it's a pretty good size <laughs> table so this will be our desk and also where we eat our meals and the nice thing is it's on a lagoon pedestal so it can go back and forth and up and down and so it's flexible moves around we're not just like trapped in this space and then at night this turns into our bedroom so it's really easy to convert from our daytime workspace to our bed we just take the table off the lagoon pedestal the pedestal comes off the bracket there and we keep it in the dresser here and then we lower the table onto there is a lip edge around the edge of the benches here lower it there then we fill in there's an empty space here with this uh, part here and then we push in the cushions and they fit perfectly Like, like this! this. <laughs> so our bed is in between a queen and a king in width and it's like a little over six feet long. Which is perfect for me. I'm six foot and I have like an inch or two on each side. So it's a little bit bigger than our bed that we had in Seattle which is great because Kona's kind of a bed hog so we have more space for all three of us. So at night we don't want to sleep directly on the cushions because we want to keep them in really good condition. So in these upper cabinets right here we have a mattress cover that we will put on the cushions at night. We also have some sheets and then we have a small fan here that we will plug into the wall outlet at night just to get some more airflow on us if it's a little bit warmer out. And then in these upper cabinets, we have a window cover, some jackets and some toiletries. So it's very random. We actually still have a lot of space left in these, which is good because we feel like over time we will accidentally accumulate more things or need some more storage space. So we have a little bit of extra storage space here. So for our electrical, we have a 3000 watt inverter. We have two 100 amp hour lithium batteries that are charged by our solar panels on the roof, which we'll cover in a bit. And we're adding a third 100 amp hour battery because with our fridge and our inverter, we're right on the edge of needing more battery power. Another battery charging option we have with the solar is we have our batteries hooked up to our alternator. So as we drive, it can charge the batteries. The other side of our bench houses most of our plumbing items. So we have a 23 gallon tank on this side. We have a 13 gallon tank on the other side. And we actually connected them. That way they act as one tank. So we didn't want to have one really large tank on 
one side of the van because we're trying to distribute the weight appropriately. So they are on different sides of the van, but they work together. So when we fill up the tanks they both fill up at the same time and what's really nice about this besides the weight issue is that we will never just run out of water in our sink but still have shower water we'll always have water in either both of them or no water in either of them so it works out nicely because one concern we had is that if we go through the sink water really fast we have tons of shower water that would just kind of suck at times so we did that for the fresh water tanks as well as the gray water tanks which we'll show in a second and then we also have a 2.5 gallon hot water heater in here. So we have hot water in our sink as well as in our shower. We're holding it down with some bungee cords right now, but we're making a more permanent solution. That way it doesn't wobble as we drive. So just like the fresh water tanks, we have two gray water tanks underneath here and we connected them. So there's one spot underneath the van that was a really good fit for a gray water tank, but to put a really large one in there, it would hang down a bit. So instead we did two smaller ones and connected them. That way they act as one gray water tank. We can store more water by having two smaller ones and then we can empty them both at the same time. And to empty them, you just flip this switch and then water comes out. And we did this so we don't have to always go underneath the van to empty it. It just makes our life a little bit easier. And in the back, we have this awesome tailgate that covers uh, the back under the benches. So just pull the handle here, it opens up. And on the left side, we have a hose that will fill up our water tanks. Uh, so we plug that in and it fills up both at the same time. In the middle here, we like to exercise, work out. So we wanted to have some gym equipment uh, with us on the road. So these are some adjustable dumbbells. Yes, they're heavy. Yes, it might add some weight to it, but we weighed the van after everything's done and complete and we are under the payload a decent amount so we thought hey let's bring them <laughs> we also have uh, these are trx type straps and then some bands so we've got a, our own little home gym here <laughs> and last but not least our roof so we added this aluminous ladder so we can get to the roof a lot easier and we just think it looks pretty cool So on our roof, we have our four 100 watt Renogy solar panels, as well as our fan. And then this is our WeBoost. So we had a whole video about a lot of the items on the roof. So if you wanna check that out, we will link to that below. But yeah, this is our little solar get up. And then I guess if we wanna like go hang out and watch the stars, we can chill up here too. We have a, a little bit of space. We are so excited to finally embark on our journey, take off on our adventure, make many memories in the van. We really hope you enjoyed the van tour. If you have any questions, you can write them below and we'll be sure to answer. We also linked uh, most of the products that we used below. Uh, but if you want a breakdown of all the costs, go to our blog on our website. And a big thank you to everyone who encouraged and supported us along the way on the build. Yeah, as those who've been following for a while know, it's been a really hard journey. So we yeah. really appreciate everyone who sent us a lot of encouragement. We are so happy to finally be done. And real quick before we go, we wanted to set expectations of what you can expect from our channel moving forward now that the van's done. We've always considered ourselves travel vloggers, not van life vloggers. So we documented our build just so we can look back and maybe help someone along the way. And it's a big part of our story, but we do not plan to post a lot of van specific vlogs in the future. We plan to instead keep on sharing all of our travels, where we like to eat when we travel, coffee shops, things to do, all the stuff that we've been doing in like our Italy, Mexico City, Pacific Northwest videos. So for those of you who've been following for a while, don't worry, the taco, ice cream, coffee content is not going away. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> we will mention the van, of course, probably in every vlog in some way, because yeah. it's part of how we're traveling now, but we really want to share like the adventures and kind of mini travel guides to destinations, not just about the van. Yeah. So we wanted to make that clear just so everyone knows what to expect moving forward. But we are pumped oh, to hit the so road. Excited. So excited. Wait. We cannot wait to share our van adventures in North America as well as our non-van adventures abroad. So we will see you on the road.